Okay, the rain is stopping, so let's get going. I was afraid I was going to have pouring down rain as my background music today. Hello everybody, Jan of Jan Higgs Creates here. Welcome to my channel. I started this video with something a little different. Um, what you saw were photos from, please forgive, I hope you can hear me okay. If the sky opens up again, please forgive me. Hopefully you can hear me. I started this video with photos from the Fans of Blackbird Designs Facebook group. I'm sure most of you have heard by now, saw posts on various Facebook groups or on Instagram or on Floss Two videos that Barb Adams, half of the Blackbird Designs design team, died on July 4th. So I wanted to do some sort of tribute to her. I could have gone on and on in the photos on the Facebook group. So many gorgeous designs, uh, so much inspiration. So if you want to keep going and keep looking, I highly recommend that you join the fans of Facebook, the fans of Blackbird Designs Facebook group, um, just to see all that beautiful stitching. It is a tragic loss, not just to her family and friends and of course Alma, but also to all of us in the in the stitching world who love her designs. Um, I don't know personally which designs might be hers and which are Alma's, how, how they collaborate, you know, that, that's not something I'm aware of, but um, I know it's a huge loss to all of us. And so my heart goes out to all of those who are touched so deeply by this loss. Um, let's see. I do have notes here. Let's see if I can look at them. Okay. Weekend was amazing up in Waco with um, Maria Kutzner and her husband, Dawn. Um, we had uh, so much fun. You probably saw that I posted the tour of the cross-stitch store Nettleveox, in, um, which is located in Copperas Cove, Texas. As I said on the video, stuffed with so many goodies. Um, I did have a bit of a problem with that video with the music. They had a radio playing and it, it didn't even occur to me. I don't think I've ever recorded in a store that's had music playing before. So this is a little bit of a public service announcement to those of you out there who might have your own floss tube channels. If you ever do a store tour, listen for the music. I did get hit with two copyright claims against that video because of the music playing. I deleted the video. I was able to delete one of the chunks where um, the music was playing. There wasn't really much happening in that chunk, so that was cool. The other chunk, though, was at the very beginning where Maria and I introduce ourselves. YouTube has a new functionality that um, once you upload the video and there's a restriction placed against it of a copyright claim, you can choose to have them do some processing on it that will apparently mute the music but keep the dialogue so i thought eh, okay let me give it a whirl it is in beta testing give it a whirl see what happens there's a when you do that there is a note that says this process may take a while okay whatever that was on tuesday afternoon it ran through tuesday through wednesday I was gonna turn it off Wednesday night. I decided I'm not gonna do anything with it anyways. I'll let it run until Thursday morning. It was still, from what I could tell, processing. So I thought, okay, enough of this. I'm just gonna delete it. I'll just add what I can to this video, to my Floss 2 video. So I turned it off. I, I went back to the video to delete it and it showed it as um, that there were no restrictions on it anymore. So I thought, okay, maybe it actually finished the processing and they just didn't let me know. I don't know. So I uploaded it. If anything sounds weird in it, I listened to it. It didn't sound any different from my original video, but if anything sounds weird in it, that's why. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, let's see. So we went to the Waco Mammoth 
National Monument, I guess it is. If you guys are ever in the Waco in area and interested in this kind of thing, go see this. I'll insert some pictures here. Um, it is so fascinating. So they found, and I was going to look this up and I forgot, they found a um, fossils of what is called a, a nursery herd. So it's the parents and juvenile mammoths. And they all died at once, and they think it was from a flood of the Waco River that the mammoths got stuck in the mud and died. There's, some, there's a saber-toothed cat fossil remains there. There's a camel fossil remains there, but they believe that there's, from other testing that they've done, that there is a, um, there are a hundred more mammoth fossils in this like half mile square area. This is an active dig. It was only recently discovered like in the, I don't know, somewhere in the 80s or 90s. It was just na made a national historic monument, part of the national park system in 2015. Just really, really cool. So we did that. Then we went to Magnolia. Um, to the silos. We didn't get to spend much time there because the skies absolutely opened up, downpour. Um, we made it to the church, and again, I'll, I'll put some photos in. We made it to the, to the little church um, and took shelter there while Don, God bless his soul, went and got the car and came down and picked us up. But even getting to the car, we got soaked. That's the second time over the weekend I got totally drenched. The first time was um, when we were backing the RV or the trailer into the um, spot where we camped at on Lake Waco. The sky decided to open up just as I needed to get out and direct Mike into the spot. It was the full on, you know, umbrella turning inside out from the wind. Mike couldn't even see me through the downpour. I'm sure the people on the trailers on either side of us really enjoyed the show. And of course, as soon as we got actually situated where we needed to be in the site, um, the rain stopped. <laughs> I'm gonna insert a video here um, of the deer that came out, um, a, a nice herd of them um, that evening of the, of the fourth. So insert that video here. Steering contest. Yep, yeah, following them. You don't see that baby that we saw earlier. Yes, I see you. So yeah, it was a lovely weekend. Um, and then, as you know, Mike's interview was last Wednesday. I appreciate all of the prayers and crossed appendages. Mike got the job. So our news is we are moving to Idaho Falls, Idaho. Eastern Idaho, we will be about a two hour drive from the Grand Tetons, which thrills us to no end. We love the Tetons. Um, two hour drive from the west entrance to Yellowstone. We've always wanted to do a winter wildlife tour of Yellowstone. So that is high on our list. Um, yeah, just thrilled. Closer to my son in Seattle, of course, further from my son in Orlando. Um, but we don't have any start date or anything. We just got the news yesterday. Um, so there's a whole lot of you know, there's some processing that has, has to happen first before Mike gets the, um, before we're able to set a start date and then everything will kind of fall in place from that. We do get a house hunting trip. Um, I don't know whether we'll take advantage of that or not. So yeah, lots of questions yet, but he got the job. I was in tears. <laughs> I was in tears. He happened to be homesick yesterday, took the phone call, um, put it on speakerphone and I was, I was, 
just in tears. Anyway, so let's see. Other news. Um, I discovered, thanks to Maria, um, we were talking about stuff one afternoon over the weekend. Um, and we discovered an error in the dimensions, fabric dimensions needed for Flora Graphica. For Flora Graphica, I usually work out the dimensions myself of what fabric you'll need for the different sizes of, of different counts of fabric. And I, I usually do it myself and note that on the, um, on the end page, the footer page of the pattern. But for some reason, I let this software, the software has a functionality to do it as well, and I let the software do it for Florographica, and it's put in this little like notes box. I don't know how this is possible, but all of the other fabrics are correct except the 32 count. The 32 count calculated it for over one instead of over two. So um, if you are doing it on 32 count and you went by the fabric size as listed in the pattern of what is needed, I am terribly sorry, but it is incorrect. The rest of them are fine. It's just the 32 count. Hopefully those of you who decided and looked at that um, and, and you're using 32 count, hopefully you looked at that fabric side size, especially in comparison with the other fabric sizes and thought something's wrong here, which is what Maria did um, and let me know. So I am very sorry for that. I have since corrected it in the PDF. I've uploaded the new PDF to my website and to Etsy and I sent the corrected copy to Fat Quarter Shop. So um, you can re-download the corrected copy if you need to. All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know, Galleria, Needlework Galleria in St. Charles, Missouri. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> St. Charles, Missouri. Um, I have my hotel room booked. Last night, I bought the membership and the Erica Michaels Strawberry Finishing Class. I am going to Galleria. That is September 22nd through the 25th. I told Mike, I don't care what's happening with this move. I am going to Galleria. <laughs> we are not canceling this one. So I hope to see a lot of you there. All right. I think that is all of the news that's fit to print. On to the stitching. Okay, I have two finishes, if you count my design, which you've seen before all over the place, but just in case you haven't. Oh, and let me let me also say, I am sitting in a different place, as I'm sure you've noticed. Um, I am actually in the passenger seat of the coach. We have a little table, like a removable table that can that goes in between the driver's seat and the passenger seat. I am up here because cats. Sasha, oh, he's no longer. Sasha was sprawled out on the kitchen table and Nina has taken up residence on my chair and I just didn't have the heart to move them. So I am up here. I think the light is fairly good. It's a little yellow up here. Um, because from the overhead lights. So, but I hope the, the light is okay and just take it for granted that everything's a little more yellow than it should be. And I'm also much closer to you. Hello. <laughs> All right, so first we have Ode to a Peacock. And then actually, the light from the window on the, on the driver's side is actually helping to, to brighten that up quite a bit. So Ode to a Peacock, this is my design based on the anti-macassar, hopefully that's how you say it, um, that I got from the antique store a few weeks ago and, and Bernie. Um, I think pretty much every single one of you knew what that was, except me, and you told me about it. <laughs> and for those of you that may not know, the, so it goes on the, the, the one with the peacock, the bigger one goes on the back of the chair, and then the other two smaller pieces go on the arm of the chair. And it's called anti-macassar because macassar is the name of a hair product that men used to use. And so it was to protect 
the back of the chair, the fabric of the chair from the men's hair lotion. Now, I'm not sure why the ones are on the arms of the chair, but I guess because your hands are dirty. I don't know. But anyways, you guys are so smart. Anti-macassar. Peacock. Ode to a peacock. This is stitched on, um, oh, testing my memory. 40 count tea set by Graham Cracker Fabrics, Kitten Stitcher's son's fabric with Mrs. Sadis Silk Floss. Mrs. Sadis does have the silk pack. This is available on my website, on my Etsy store. Fat Quarter Shop has it up. And um, it is, I've sent it to the silk app people. And so they are working on getting it up on the silk app as well. So, peacocks. There were peacocks everywhere in the store in Texas, in Cop in, up near Waco in Copperas Cove. The one that, I, that is in the back of my mind um, calling to me, and, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily big into peacocks. I like them. But, my goodness, there was, like, I don't know, three or four different peacock designs we saw at that store, one of which was the Mill Hill one. Gorgeous. And I, I pointed it out in the video. I may get that. Something else I meant to say. In along, along the lines of the um, Blackbird designs, the pattern... What remains is love. I tell you what, just saying that, you know, I have to wonder if when they designed that, if they knew that Barb was ill. Um, but anyways, see, I'm, I'm oh, so emotional. Um, I'm going to be getting that. Once I get settled, it's, it's sold only through, it's exclusive to um, traditional stitches in Canada the store in Canada. Once I get settled in Idaho, I will be ordering that because I I hope there, there's it's still available at that point. All right, my other finish is Let's Do What We Love and Do It A Lot by Jeanette Douglas. So I am using, or I used Vicki Clayton silks on this basically my own colors. Some of them are, I mean, most of them are similar to the called for, but not all of them. I love this little piece. This is stitched on 36 count. Um, it's an under the sea fabric that I do not have the color name for. I use two strands of silk because I find Vicky's silks just a little bit thinner. So two strands works wonderfully. I think I have missed a stitch there on the bottom of my tomato <laughs> oh well um two strands works wonderfully on 36 count so um yeah i will probably get this framed i have an awful lot of things to get framed all of that will wait until i get up to idaho those framing stores up there are going to get a lot of business from me i hope they handle needlework well let me know. So I posted in um, both my page and my group about moving to Idaho, and I've already heard from at least two, Beth Daniels, Marjean Boyd, there's somebody else, I think, who actually live in that area, and those two, so Beth's husband and Marjean's son-in-law, both work where Mike is going to be working. What are the chances of that? <laughs> Idaho National Laboratories, by the way, is the place he's working. So if you're in that area, let me know. I do plan, once I get settled, on starting a stitching group like I started in Hawaii. Um, I can't wait. Vicky Silks. Okay, so Vicky Silks. I wanted to let you know, this is going to be so amazingly cool. She has started, so you know that I get, <clears throat> excuse me, you know that I get her fiber of the month variegated set every month. She is changing up her variegated set in that she is starting to create colors based on the over dyed flosses that are out there. So Gentle Arts, Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, she is going to start to create 
colors based on their flosses so that whenever it's time to do a conversion, like this, for example, the called for colors are all over dyed flosses, she will have the colors. It's going to take a long time to get to the point where she has them all, but she's, I think she's planning on doing them, doing as many as she can. She seems to be starting with gentle arts. Um, so yeah, if you have been thinking about joining her fiber of the month and haven't yet, I don't know when, whether she's going to be starting it with this coming month or maybe the month after, I would say fairly soon. Um, now's a great time to join in because her colors are going to start mirroring what you see in the cotton over dyed floss world. So that is just cool. And I asked her this morning, um, cause I knew I would be talking about her things whether her silks are color fast. And her response is pretty much what I got from um, Raquel, Mrs. Sadas, that they can take a coolish water, quick dunk with a little bit of mild soap. Um, you don't wanna let it sit like what happened to my poor Narnia um, in water, but you can do a quick dunk and they should be fine. She says some of them she's very confident about, other ones, you know, like I would assume she means like the, the richer, deeper colors, like the reds and the blues, um, the deeper blues. You know, you have to be careful with those. Color ca catchers, shout color catchers are a thing. But anyways, um, I was glad to hear that you can, you can give them a dunk. I will be talking about that more in a bit. All right. Next on the agenda is another kind of mini finish. Prim Stitch series. I took this with me over the weekend and got, that is block number 10 that I finished there. I really hope to get 11 and 12 done here in um, July because at the end of July, another stitch along of theirs is a fat quarter shop is starting that I'm going to be participating in and I'd love to have this off of my plate. A little bit every day does the trick, right? That's what I have found. So I love this. This is stitched with the called for, called for RFL flosses. On the called for fabric, which is 25 count Lugana in, I don't remember the, the name of the color, but it's over one instead of over two. And I, I adore this. I just think it's, it's so cute. Over one. Oh my God, I love it. So yeah, two more blocks and this will be finished. Something else to get framed. And then I did have another start, a new start that wasn't mine for July. My sole contribution to Christmas in July is Misty Luminous Fiber Arts jingle jolly joy so the next part i think i'm saying those in the right or order jolly is coming out tomorrow she's releasing a part every um saturday so you can see little jingle isn't done yet but that's okay again a little bit every day I, this actually hasn't gotten any love for the past couple days because i've been working on actually the prim village to get that done um and jeanette's let's do what we love to get that done um, but yeah, this will start getting more love today. This is 40 count. This is actually her kit. So this is her fabric called Opulence. It's a 40 count. And then her called for flosses for several of the over dyes. She provided a kit for that. The rest, the called for are DMC. I am using just other over dyed flosses that seem to match the DMC. So, you can see I really need to get working on that border, too. And actually, she showed a couple of people that are finishing it as, um, they're each little squares, right? Finishing them as ornaments. I wish I had thought of that so that I would have started. I actually have other pieces of this. She sent a fat eighth. Um, but I wish I had, I had thought of that or made that decision before so that I would have started this up further because I think I will do these separately as um, ornaments as well. I like that idea. 
rather than one long piece that's something else I'd have to get framed. Ornaments I can finish <laughs> myself. All right, so that's my, oh, that's not all my stitching. Let me um, show you my knitting in between here first because it's right here. So I am continuing on the knights that say neat. Mystery knit along, which is no longer a mystery because everybody else has finished. Well, not everybody, but the, the knit along has finished. I am starting on clue four. That is this section here. So pretty. So again, slowly but surely, this will get a lot of attention once we start driving. Because this is, you know, I put, like working on knitting. Knitting is easier to do while driving than stitching, depending on the quality of the roads out there. So once we start doing our driving hither and yon to get up to Idaho, this will get more love. But I started clue four, so I expect by uh, the end of next week, I'll have clue four done, and then I'll be ready to start on clue five. Five. This is, I am using Miss Babs. Um, Yummy Two Ply Toes, which is the called for yarn. Okay, and then last but not least, sewing box sampler. I don't know whether I really need to put that behind there. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, this is much slower going <laughs> than I had hoped. The, the uh, pattern keep wrap tells me I'm at 30%, but I'm not really because it doesn't do back stitch so it doesn't take into account this up here which is done thank heavens but the whole border now i learned that that is not called bargello this up here is called bargello but this is called gobelin i think i've used them i've seen them used interchangeably i don't know though i'm not an expert on those kind of stitches but that border goes the whole way down the side i can't get my hand around there we go so this goes the whole way down the side it's slow going. That's a lot of stitching in there, but it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore it. So it is worth it. So yeah, sewing box sampler number one, slowly but surely is getting done. And I'm very happy with it. Now I am going to need to roll up. I mean, I have a little, little ways to go yet, but I am going to have to roll up my, my scroll bar soon. And I'm really worried about smushing my satin stitches there. Which is one of the reasons I asked Vicki about whether her silks are color fast because I do want to be able to wash this when I'm done so that hopefully if those satin stitches do get smushed, they perk up and puff up. They're so nice and puffy now. I hate the thought of smushing them. I will be putting, um, I have some batting somewhere. It's probably in storage now. <laughs> but I will um, find something to put in between the fabric and the roller bar to protect my stitches. Okay, so I think that is all my current stuff. I have some, oh, so many goodies to show you. A ton more to talk about. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to handle this since I'm not used to this smaller space. Let me rearrange my whips and my goodies and I'll be right back. I think I'm going to do this in the order I got them. That's probably the way to, that makes the most sense as much as I remember. First, I'm gonna start with this little card though. I don't remember when I got this. So this was a, a, a um, little card that I got in response to a giveaway. I think this was for the Earth Laughs. Yes, the cat kit. This is from Kathy Harris. I, I just had to share this card with you. So this is fabric that she just sewed on to the card. How cool is that? So the pendants are actually like printed on the fabric. The Rick Rack's printed on the fabric. Isn't that cool? I love that. I think that is so clever. Thank you, Kathy. You didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. All right. Um, I got the, I don't 
don't know whether this was June or July. Oh, it's June. Luckily, it says it on it. The June Floss of the Month NPI from Fat Quarter Shop. I'm going to need to take this out because I don't know whether you can really see how pretty these are. So this is June's Fine Floss Club um, NPI Silks. I put my little whiteboard away. Look how gorgeous. Now, I was planning on using March's greens for the summer seasons of lace design, and I may still, but gosh, these purples are gorgeous. Now, speaking of NPI Silk and um, Fat Quarter Shop, we have decided to switch up, instead of me designing things for Cosmo Floss, from here on out, we're going to be, or I'm going to be designing, I'm going to be using the NPI Silk instead of the Cosmo Floss. Um, getting the Cosmo Floss is getting more and more difficult, at least from my perspective. Um, it does come from Japan, and they get it through, you know, different distributors, but the distributors have a hard time getting it because it does get shipped from Japan and it is literally on a ship. It's not like it's on a, a plane or anything. It takes forever to get in. And so if it goes out of stock, it takes forever to get it restocked. So um, I was talking to them the other day and I said, you know, I don't know whether it's worth continuing with the Cosmo. I've had this design ready to go for probably about a month and I've been waiting on the floss. And I said, you know, I, I, I don't know whether it's worth it. And, she, and Kimberly was like, why don't we use NPI instead? And I was like, ooh. <laughs> so they got an NPI color card for me, the complete NPI, you know, it's, it's amazing. So I sent them the colors I needed. They will be sending those to me. I will get that stitched up. So hopefully I will have a new design coming out. Um, I'd like to say by the end of July, I'll have that done. There's a lot of other stitching that has to happen and of course a move thrown in there as well. But anyways, from now on, these kind of quarterly designs with the floss pack from Fat Quarter Shop is going to be NPI. And I am going to keep the, the color numbers low. This one coming up actually has 10 colors. So that's actually, that's the highest I'll go. Because what I want these to be, if you are interested in trying this silk, I want these to be smaller packs so it's not going to cost an arm and a leg for you to, to buy this silk and try it out. Um, so anyways, hopefully that will be coming out soon. Um, I also just got, all right, so we're totally out of the chronological order, but that's okay because this is laying on top. I got the July, um, what is it, pins, what do they call this? Just Pins Club from Fat Quarter Shop. So you can see it's like 4th of July, aren't those cute? Now I know I read somewhere that they were going to be going to every other month or once a quarter or something like that. It apparently hasn't started yet. So they send a pattern every month. This is just another button company to go with the pins. This one's awfully cute. So I might keep that one. I might try and do that. I haven't done any of the other ones. I um, have a sore spot on my lips, so sorry if I keep licking at it. It's bothering me. Um, okay, I'm not gonna try and shove that in there because it is resisting me. I had mentioned to you the book from Amazon, Embroidered Stories, about the Scottish sampler collection that was in Edinburgh, I believe was 2019. So that came in the mail, I think like right after my last video. I haven't really, I've looked through it, I haven't really read it yet, but um, lots of great information in here about Scottish samplers. So yes, the idea of doing a Scottish themed sampler is still on my mind. It's not gonna happen for a while yet though. All right, what's next? Okay, this. So, me. 
So Kim Smith had gotten in touch with me. Um, I think it was before Mother's Day. And we had talked about doing a giveaway for Mother's Day. I didn't get my act together quick enough to do that. But it doesn't have to be Mother's Day to do a giveaway. And with her giveaway, she always sends me gifts. So gifts. So Kim is in Canada. Her um, website or her, um, well, actually, she does have a website too. Kim Stitch and Stuff is her name on both Etsy and her website. She does project bags. She does amazing, amazing things. There's her information. I will also be putting this below, though all linked up and all that stuff. So, oh my goodness, I just, there's so much here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I think she saw this fabric and knew I had to have it. So she made me a project bag, Kim Stitch and stuff, little tag on it. Her attention to detail is amazing. So beautifully made bag. Look at that zipper pull. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that. Look at the handle. Metal attachments, D-rings. I mean, just beautifully done. But wait, there's more. She sent me a little notions bag to go with it. Little tab finish on the zipper. She sent a little needle holder book. Again, a little bit of fussy cutting there to make sure the little kitty face is in that. And then this is so cool. Wait, I also have to show you scissor fob to match and a little charm on the bottom. Isn't that awesome? Whoa. Don't need the scissors to fall out and stab me. And then this. So this is a, I don't know whether she calls it a floss folder, bobbin folder, but the thing, well, there's multiple things I love about this. It has a magnetic snap. I love that. I think that is taking it up a notch. And then inside, she has all of these pockets. So these are meant for bobbins. I am using it for my sewing sampler box flosses, Mrs. or um, Vicki Clayton silks, all the little spools. Now, because it is meant for bobbins, I won't say the spools work perfectly. It does work well, but I got in touch with Kim and I said, would you be interested in designing one of these just for the spools so the spools fit better? And she said, yes. So I expect that at some point in the not too distant future, I will be showing you that. So, but on this, the bobbins, the bobbin folder, so we have a pocket down here again a sweet little charm on the zipper a little this is a little pin cushion just a little one puffy and again her little tag on it so it fits so well so thank you Kim I do have one of those to give away We'll talk more about that later. All right, so that's that. Next, all right, so I mentioned my Pornarnia project that the floss bled on. I've been thinking a lot about that because I need to get a model stitched up of that. I do have the model from Brenda Eller. Is that how you say your name, Brenda? Um, she actually did the model stitching for me on that one. She used the DMC colors, the, the blue and the gold. I can't 
can't remember if I put those pictures up. Anyways, um, I do want to get a model stitch, though, using Oxide, the Mrs. Satis Oxide and Midnight. So I've been thinking a lot about what to substitute for, you know, what I started and it got bled on. I'm going to do something with that fabric that got bled on. I just don't know what yet. But I went on to um, Kitten Stitcher's site and got a couple of fox and rabbit fabrics, 40 count. This one is called Prehistoric. And it is much bluer than it is showing in this light. Um, it looks really gray in this light, and that's what I saw on my monitor as well. But in real life, it's really a blue-gray. So I, I, you know, it's okay, but um, did I do any stitching on this? It didn't call out to me. It was okay, but it, it was just okay. The other fabric I got was um, Ancient Ruin. Again, 40 count fox and rabbit. And it, this is a much darker gray. And this is the one I was going to go with. I could swear I did stitching on these. <laughs> Maybe I took it back out. I don't know. When your brain goes, you know. So, it's not bad. I kind of liked the darker fabric. Both, the, I think the colors will really pop on it. And again, I think it's showing up more brown on the camera than it really is. It's a dark gray. There might be some brown on it. Mike would probably say it's brown. I think I've talked to you before about our disputes on colors like olive green and brown and gray. Um, so those those are two that I got specifically to try and use for for uh, for um, Narnia. The jury's still out because. I picked up some other fabrics at Netovex. I picked up a lot of fabric. <laughs> I don't need more fabric. I have an under the bed box with fabric. I like using the under the bed boxes, the big things, because I can open the fabric out so it's laying flat, so it's you know, there's not as many creases. Some of the pieces do still have to be folded, but there's not as many creases. I have one under the bed box totally full of fabric. I'm going to have to get a second one, which is okay because my original intent was to have two, one for the counts of fabric from like 32 and lower, um, and one for 36 and higher. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. But anyways, I got this piece of Weeks Dye Works Mocha, and I put these flosses on that this and i think it's a richer color in real life than what you're seeing on the screen and i just went oh now seeing on screen i kind of like the darker gray better but in real life i like this and i actually like instead of the um <laughs> my flosses are such a mess my oxide um i kind of like the this is the yellow that is mixed in with on the midnight skein, and this is the gold on the oxide skein. And I like this better than this brighter yellow. But anyways, those are some possibilities. This is 36 count mocha. Now, Nanofarix, the way they this is actually a a very I, I said give I'll take all of it. I don't care that there's this piece cut out of it. <laughs> um, Nettleverix does their fabric differently than I think any other shop that I've visited. They take your stitch count and they will cut your fabric. They serge it. Um, and um, I guess base the, the cost on the inch, the square inch. They do the calculations that way. Um, so anyways, I got that. I also got Liberty Gather Liberty Gray from R and R. This is also a 36 count as a possibility. And I just this this didn't throw me. I did not take my floss with me. I mean it it works. It's okay. It just it just didn't wow me. I don't know. 
everything looks better on camera. <laughs> I don't know. So anyways, this is 36 count Liberty Gray. And again, they, they surge. In fact, let me see if I can find the other piece that I got that was kind of like an end, odd end piece. So this is, um, picture this plus legacy. And they just had this piece and then this small piece. And I said, I'll take them both. She surged around the corner. <laughs> How awesome is that? You don't see that every day. So yeah, that's Legacy. This is a 40 count. And then I also got 40 count Heartland because I've never had those fabrics before. And I think one of these will probably be used for my new um, my new design with the M M NPI silk. So stay tuned for that. And then I got because why not? 36 count platinum. Um, I'm not sure. I think this is a weak style works as well, but I'm not sure. Platinum, just a nice plain ivory. It was just a little, again, a little remnant long because it's a nice pretty neutral. Why not? And then they had a stack. They obviously got some samples or, you know, just a, a small choice of fox and rabbit. And they had, most of them were 32 counts. I think there was a couple 36, but this is Winter Wren. 32 count Fox and Rabbit. Scrumptious. Just such a scrumptious color. I could not pass it up. Some of it had to come home with me. This would be gorgeous for Florographica. If any of you are looking for a nice chocolate, this would be awesome. So... That was my fabric purchases from that store. The little horn books that Maria was looking at at the beginning, I got one of those. I don't know what I'll do with it, but it sure is cute. We both got Namaste, Needleminder Namaste. And I will, I will stitch up my little Namaste freebie. For those of you that um, haven't seen it, I do have a freebie that kind of coordinates with the Ode to a Peacock. It has Namaste written in both um, the Devanagri script and in Roman letters. And then I got these little scissors because everybody needs some scissors like this, right? All right, charts. I didn't get any um, anything from Stash Unloading this week. Aren't you proud of me? I sure did spend a lot at Nettlebrox, though. <laughs> all right, so if you if you watched that video, you saw all of these. The mystery, Christmas mystery pattern from Lizzie Kate from, I don't know whether she says the date on this. Holly, Holly and Hearts. So I got that one. Miss Lucy Calcutt, again, if you watched the video, you know. I've had my I had my eye on this one that first came out, totally forgot about it, saw it at the store, and it came home with me. This Mill Hill. You know, one of the things that captivates me is any time there's really nice shading on a pattern. Kudos to artists that can do like Teresa Kogut, she does amazing shading on her designs. That's another reason why I love um, over-dyed flosses so much, because you can get that shading without the work. And then this little Mill Hill kit that um, I got for me and Maria. Maria, when are we going to start this? Sorry for the glare. This is a Mill Hill kit that actually is fabric instead of, um, instead of perforated paper. And I will use the fabric that came, comes in the kit, because since there are beads as well, um, you know, the beads they, the beads fit a certain way on certain fabric, and so you want to stick with the fabric that comes with the kit. All right. Last, but certainly not least, as far as acquisitions go. Maria brought me a gift. And I almost cried. Maria is a 
is a very talented sewist and also a very talented needleworker. And she made me this. I wish you lived next door. Maria, I do too. We would have so much fun. So she stitched that and she sewed the fat, the bag. I mean, she knows the turquoise is my favorite color. And she works at the store Stitch Niche. So she gave me their thread keep and ruler. She made me a little thread bed and this has her tag on it. So she does have an Etsy store and a website. She does not have anything up on them yet, I don't believe. She does make bags that she sells through the store. Most of her bags that she makes are the vinyl front kind. She knows that I prefer all fabric though, so she made me this. And then, goodness because she knows she watches my video and she knows that I've started to get the what are these called the let's talk ones by hands-on design so I had the spring she got me autumn and summer or maybe she, I got winter <laughs> thank you Maria I'm missing one I will have to look and see which one it is And then, a little key fob thread keep. Look how pretty that is. And little threaders. I've never seen ones like this, actually. There's a little, the little wire thing over there. You can't see it. So yeah, Maria. I said it before, I'll say it again. You are too good to me. And yes, I wish you lived next door. Move to Idaho Falls with me. We would have so much fun. All right. I think that is all the goodies except for the giveaways. So, last video, we had a couple of giveaways to celebrate Christmas in July. First off, Peppermint Lane for all of those who love candy canes. Now this is, I will hopefully get this in, in the mail to you so you can still start it for Christmas in July. This goes to Tana Parente. And of course, excuse me, I will be commenting on your comment. And then the Merry Making Quilt goes to Jennifer Ingram. And Jennifer said she's been looking for an easier quilt to try her hand at quilting. So, Jennifer, here you go. I want to see what you do with it. Now, you guys will be happy to hear that I found the floss, the silk floss for Flora Graphica. <laughs> it was in the bottom of a drawer underneath some things that I thought I had looked through, but apparently I didn't look through well enough. So, this is one of today's giveaways. And it, she does have, so this is from Vicki Clayton. This is Vicki Clayton Silks. You can see on the back here, she has the list of the DMC that I've charted and her equivalents and how many spools of each. So for the Florographica Silk to be eligible to be entered in the drawing for that, you need to say in your comment, and yes, this is totally gratuitous of me, you need to say in your comment, I love Flora Graphica. <laughs> I love it. Um, again, don't say contest, don't say winner, don't say giveaway, all of that stuff. I actually say winner in the comment whenever I comment on your comment if you've won, but whatever. All right, so this is open to anybody in the world. This one is only open to U.S. Um, I'm thinking of this because it's kind of silly because it comes from Canada. <laughs> Shipping these days is just ridiculous. It just costs so much. Um, 
All right, U.S. and Canada is what this will be for. So this is one of the floss folders from Kim. Kim Stitch and Stuff. Isn't that pretty? So again, the little pin cushion here. This is a little zipper pocket here. And the different rows for your bobbins, your floss bobbins, or your spools of silk. What I want you to do to be eligible to win this is, um, I'm thinking, wish I would have weighed this. I think this is going to probably cost about 15 probably more like $17 if I have to mail it outside of the U.S. or Canada. Um, it might be more. I mailed something that was two and a half ounces that was $17 to Australia. That might be about two ounces. All right worldwide suck it up buttercup <laughs> you know worldwide i hate leaving anybody out so worldwide everybody is going to be included um i love for flora graphica if you're interested in this for this one i want to know whether you do use bobbins or not for your floss so both of them worldwide I think that is everything, except our little angel. Again, Teresa Kogut's Angel Kindness Cards. This one says, be kind always. Even when someone doesn't seem to deserve kindness, be kind anyway, for you know not of their struggles. Just be kind. Needlework Press has, a, I think, a fairly new new um, pattern out that talks about being kind in it. All right, guys. I think that's all. Again, it'll be a couple weeks before you see me. I'm sure I will have all kinds of news about, um, I hope I have all kinds of news about what's happening with our move. Um... I also hope that will put us towards the end, well, kind of the middle-ish week before the end of July. So hopefully I will have a good start, if not, if I'm not done yet, on the NPI um, design from, with Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I will be starting soon to design Seasons in Lace Summer. That is for the end of August release, and I'm getting into some shenanigans with Maria, which hopefully we will be able to share with you by the end of July. So I think that's everything. Guys, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Again, thank you so much for your support and your love and your prayers as we are waiting to hear about Mike's job. Um, such a huge relief to know that he got it so we can move forward um, and move to Idaho. I can wear all my winter wear that I've knit that I haven't been ever able to wear for a couple years. <laughs> this is a good thing. All right, guys, I love you. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.